Hey everyone, welcome to another 6.5 on the road here in New York City at Cloudera Evolve. I'm joined here by my wonderful co-host, Mr. Patrick Moorhead, by the way, the MC and keynote here at, at Cloudera Evolve. Good morning, Pat, how are you, buddy? You've been at it. I've been at it, been on camera already. I gotta tell you, they must have gone through a long list of presenters before they got to me. And But I gotta tell you though, I had so much fun Josh Wardle was up there, and by the way, I, I really stink at that game, but it was great to hear uh, uh, from IBM, it was great to hear from uh, CEO uh, Rob Bearden yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, it was great to hear from Rob, and I did Wordle while the Wordle guy, while Josh Wardle was up there talking about Wordle, I did my Wordle and I sent it to you because I wanted to give you ammo, and thank you so much for then using it to kind of give you a little comedy relief. Anything the I third or fourth time you, you got back up on stage. Now, um, really excited. We have some great guests today. We'll get them on in just a minute. Um, just excited to be here though, Pat. Your keynote kicked off the event. Very, uh, very impassioned conversation. You told everybody their cloud sucks. <laughs> now, I'm sure when you got a room full of enterprise executives, CTOs, data leaders, I'm sure they really appreciated that. I'm sure they but, did, but, and uh, Rob Bearden didn't yank me, which I appreciated. Yeah, so. no, you, you know what? I think sometimes provocation works. I think we've learned that from social media and whatnot. So without further ado, we've got Carolyn and Santiago here. Uh, some great guests we've, we've come across in the past. Uh, quick opportunity for both of you. Just introduce yourselves and talk a little bit about your role at Cloudera. Sure, I'm Carolyn Duby. I am field CTO here at Cloudera. I work with customers across the Americas and across the world um, on general use cases as well as a specialty in cybersecurity and streaming. My name is Santiago. Um, I lead product marketing for Cloudera's hybrid data services. Uh, my background is generally in machine learning uh, and data science. Uh, that's how I started off in this career. Uh, it turns out that when you can write and talk and or can do tech, you end up in product marketing. So, uh, so here I am. So this is great. We have. Um, Carolyn, you, in, you know, directly meet with customers every day uh, and your team. And Santiago, product marketing, I love it. Did it, did that in product management for over 20 years before I did the analyst gig. I'm definitely a product person. Uh, but hey, instead of talking about myself uh, longer, now I want to talk about the important stuff. And I want to hone in on AI and ML. It's been a really interesting journey, right? Where you know, is AI really AI? You know, what is it? Is, is AI just fancy analytics, right? But regardless of whether it's analytics, whether it's AI, or whether it's ML, it's all about getting uh, insights, actual insights out of the data for organizations to do, do some awesome stuff. So uh, the question I have for both of you, and Santiago, I'll, st I'll start with you, is what are some of the challenges uh, that, that you're seeing out there right now regarding with your customers getting AI and ML going? Yeah, and, and I think you touched on something that's really interesting. Um, what is machine learning? What is AI, right? Um, a lot of organizations are trying to mm -hmm. adopt these strategies. Um, and there's, uh, there's sort of like a, 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 a certain way that people are thinking about it that, that generally, in my opinion, um, uh, needs to be kind of rethought. And, and I think it kind of approaches it in two specific areas. One is a technology that enables you to make predictions um, and then how you use those predictions. And two, it's the culture of an organization. And I think between those two, that's where you often see a lot of the challenges um, where they lie. Um, on the technology side, I would say that uh, it's really about understanding that machine learning and artificial intelligence are really not the same thing. Um, AI is you know, how you essentially get things done, how a business can use it. Um, applications, things like that. Whereas machine learning technically is just an algorithm. But as a collective, to get to AI, it's so much more. You have to do so many different things in terms of data ingestion and data engineering and getting those workflows into your machine learning models effectively. Um, on the cultural side, which I think can be sometimes the biggest hurdle, uh, it really has to do with essentially how an organization adopts it and how they change the way that they function at a fundamental level to actually make use of those predictions effectively. Interesting, Carol. How about you? I mean, you know, I said your 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 team and you talk to customers every day. It's probably every hour. Uh, what are you seeing out there? What are some of the challenges to uh, actually get in and do AI and ML? So I think 
there are a number of different hurdles, technical hurdles, that you have to cross over in order to do AI and ML. And, and, are, and are they different from analytics um, or similar? They're different because of when you start to use AI and ML, you have to look and see how it fits into the process, right? So AI and ML are just another tool in a toolkit. And you have to look at how are you using that AI and ML. But to back up a step, you have to look at an automated decision and how that will be managed by the organization. So it might be something different than the organization has done before. So they're making a decision using humans, right. right? The people that are working at the organization. And then how do you incorporate an automated process into that whole flow? And then how do you put in the logistics and the fairness behind that process. So you're making an, a decision, is it fair? Is the data that you're working with biased? Or um, you know, does, does that automated process need breaks on it, some friction in order to make sure that it's staying on track? How do we have the care and the feeding, right? So that's the building the model and doing the actual technical work of building the model is just one step in the process. You have to consider the whole, the whole flow. You know, it's interesting. Um, I listened to Rob Bearden, your CEO, speak. We listened to IBM's Rob Thomas speak. I listened to you. And then yesterday, Pat, by the way, we spent a day at Google Cloud Next, and we listened to a number of what their customers as well as their executives are saying. And, and I'm hearing a lot of the same thing. And Carolyn, I want to kind of ask you this. One of the most probably valuable data points that our audience could get right now from you, and as well, I think, from you, is what are your customers sort of coming to you asking for help with? Because what I got as a whole after listening to all these people is this is hard. It's a hard problem. And so when they come to you, are you seeing consistency in what they're asking? Or what are some of the big questions that are, that are regularly coming your way? So I think a lot of the challenges are around change management. So navigating how do I go from where I am now to where I want to be in the future. So again, we're, we're in the midst of a big digital transformation, a rapid acceleration, and everybody's just trying to figure out, you know, where are we now and where are we going? So, you know, looking at that and then looking at some of the technical challenges of moving forward with, you know, I have a lot of data, how do I secure it? How do I govern it? How do I make it? available for other teams to use, right? Because the, the security and the governance are the glue that you know, goes in the foundation to help other people manage and, and share the data. And if you can't share the data, you can't do the next step, which is the AI and the ML and the analytics. Yeah, no, that's, in our research, we've seen one of the biggest challenges is around simplicity, right? It's kind of funny. Uh, at one level, you know, you have uh, data scientists and the folks who, you know, go all the way down to the algorithm level saying, hey, I don't need it to be simplified, but more times than not, when I ask enterprises why they're not widely using AI or ML, it's about, it's about simplicity. It's just too hard and they don't have the right people. And if they do, these people are really expensive. And I'm curious, Santiago, this question's for you. What is Cloudera doing to simplify um, you know, it, through the entire data life cycle, uh, AI and ML? Yeah, I, I think that um, there's a couple different ways of, of thinking about this question, right? Uh, so Cloudera in general, because we're a hybrid data cloud company, you can actually do machine learning and artificial intelligence pretty much wherever you need it. Um, as I mentioned before... Now, what, I, what do you mean by that, wherever? Do you mean for uh, everybody, anywhere? Uh, Yep, exactly. Um, so basically, uh, whether you're a giant organization that's trying to run a multi-cloud environment, or whether you have some data that's required to be on-premises and some that's required to be in some kind of cloud, or whether you have a line of business strategy, um, Cloudera essentially enables you to have the same quality experience in an end-to-end -end workflow for machine learning. Um, in any of those environments, in any combination of those. Um, also, portability is really important for those workloads. Um, and I think that, uh, you know, one of the most important pieces is how you enable that end-to-end -end flow. So 
we tend to think that machine learning, AI, that's just these models that are making predictions. The reality is the model can sometimes be the smallest part of the project. Um, it's about how you get that data where it needs to be. Oftentimes you're talking about petabytes of data across hundreds of different sources. Um, you have to be able to automate those data engineering pipelines that then inform a model that then enable you to automate those workflows in an effective way. And you need to have explain explainability um, within essentially baked into it so that it's not a black box and that the business teams can feel confident about the decisions that they end up making. Will, uh, will CDP1 uh, simplify things even further? Absolutely. So uh, CDP1, um, as, as a fully managed software as a service product, uh, it actually enables you to do streamlined machine learning without any of the IT, essentially, management on the backside. Um, and it's going to offer a completely streamlined, um, agile, and very fast way of getting to end results very quickly. And the cool thing about CDP1 is that it really encompasses that entire machine learning lifecycle that I mentioned. Um, it's not just about the writing, writing the code, but everything else is kind of packaged really neatly so you can deliver results quickly. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a huge. I think that's a huge benefit of the CDP one because it looks completely different than any other product we've built before, and it's built with that kind of end user in mind. You know, looking at okay, I want to go in and work with some data now. You know, how do I get there? It's a different way of of uh, organizing the product and the interface. Yeah, Daniel and I both wrote uh, papers on that, and, and I know. We're pretty pretty excited about that, and it really opens it up to a brand new market. Listen, I've never heard anybody say, uh, I didn't get the capability that I needed out of Cloudera, right? That they could get there, right? But um, uh, they've told me that, hey, it, it's, it's, it's hard for a certain set of people that I want to use this. And uh, once you know CDP1 uh, gets out to more people, I, I really think that that's going to that's going to go away and big investment on on your part i know you made some acquisitions uh in there and, and you pulled that together so sorry to interrupt no I, I was just thinking to myself one of the big opportunities for cloudera is truly kind of winning the market perception that it has that data life cycle from prime to cloud and of course up on stage today we're talking hybrid we're talking hybrid i believe and, and Carolyn, I'll direct this your way, that Cloudera is still, the majority of its workloads are still on-prem, but there's a shift going on. And as I've kind of hit you on that customer uh, response, do you find the customers right now are very open and uh, re receptive and are moving forward with Cloudera's journey? Because it's kind of like a journey together, right? I mean, you yeah. got, went from very prem focused to talking a lot more about cloud, but again, you know, the, the, the guts, the Hortonworks guts, the Cloudera guts, these were the best in the, the most robust on-prem data solutions, and now you're changing that story. How are the customers sort of reacting, and are you able to get them to come along? So it's a journey. And each one of our customers has goes at a different pace. Some of our customers are going very quickly to the cloud. Some of them are, um, you know, looking at more of a hybrid strategy. And some some customers will probably stay on just on premise due to, you know, just the, the restrictions of of their business environment or the way that they operate. So, um, you know, as far as that journey, we're giving customers the flexibility to make the choices that they need and to run their workloads where they want to run them. And this is hugely powerful and it resonates really well with the folks that I've been talking to because they don't really know. You know, things are still very uncertain in, in the marketplace and they don't know, you know, is this the right place that I want to work, run my workload and do I want to spend a lot of time re-engineering something from, um, you know, from a proprietary system and if I want to take it to a, a different place, right? So they, the customers like the flexibility of being able to run the workload where they want to run it. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, you know, in, in, in my talk this morning, I talked about um, uh, hybrid infrastructure and how you need a hybrid data strategy. Uh, and, and that, hey, it's probably safe to go in the water right now. Just watch it. There's still some uh, sharks out there. By the way, I give Hannah Smalltree uh, credit for that. I stole that directly from her. Uh, but, but the main point uh, here being is you have to offer your customers the wide variety. And it's an interesting psychological thing, and you can appreciate this from a marketing standpoint. Uh, if you didn't have CDP Cloud and you didn't have CDP One, people would think, okay, they're trying to 
hoard my data on-prem. But what's pointed out to me uh, as I got ready for the keynote is somebody told me, hey, Pat, like not everybody is in the cloud. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, that's, that's, that's super interesting. And, and um, it is the big challenge, which is how do I manage this data? Uh, how do I protect this data, right? What's the lineage of that data when a lot of your customers uh, who, you know, quite frankly, are very regulated businesses uh, come up and the regulators show up and they want to know, you know, what's happening uh, with, with, with all the data. Does the game change at all? And Santiago, I'll start with you. Does that game change at all between what your customers are doing today and moving into AI and ML? Or is it, you know, is that consistent flow good for all data workloads? Um, yeah, I, I think that the way that a lot of organizations are evolving is oftentimes yes to the cloud, but oftentimes not. Um, so one of the things that we really focused in on at Cloudera was providing a cloud native experience on premises as well. So you mentioned, for example, that um, it seems like a lot of our messaging is changing and kind of the identity of Cloudera is evolving, which is definitely true. But at the same point, we're realists in terms that the largest organizations in the world fundamentally may have requirements to keep stuff on premises. Right. And we need to offer the best possible experience on that. And something you would expect from you know, what you get in the cloud, you should be able to get that same quality on premises so that you can deliver AI and ML or advanced analytics or consumer applications or whatever it might, might be. And um, I think kind of underpinning all that is this notion that uh, we architected the Cloudera data platform in such a way that it enables truly uh, a true data fabric with all of the interconnected data services that work together to deliver results uh, with the SDX and security that sits underneath. Um, it delivers essentially that open data lakehouse experience with unified analytics across the board uh, so that you can solve those problems quickly. Excellent. So, so as we take this interview home, uh, Carolyn, I'd love to ask you, as the customer-facing side, and by the way, you've both been great guests. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what is the advice and recommendations for the AI and ML journey for the enterprise? Do you have a couple of things that you're sort of telling them consistently? Because I know every, every case is unique, but product management, it's all about having a consistent story. So what's the story you're telling customers in terms of getting their journey started? So I, I would say focus on three things. One is making sure that you're paying attention to what you're doing and making sure that you're, you know, AI and ML, again, it's a technology, it's a particular technique, but look at how am I delivering business value? And then the second point is looking at the data and making sure that you have a really good, strong data foundation because that is the foundation that will help you to build on all of your data products. So thinking about what kind of data products am I delivering to my customers, whether that be internal customers or external customers, am I delivering the kinds of um, insights that they can actually use Right? Not, just, not just random data, but, but actually products that they can actually use. And then the third thing is, how am I thinking about my AI and ML projects and how they fit into that larger uh, process throughout the organization? You know, whether that be a customer workflow or some internal uh, optimization processes. You know, how, how do we use it and how do we make sure that it's, that it's doing the right, um, you know, playing the right role in that process? No, I appreciate that uh, super advice here. And uh, with that, I think uh, we're at our final, uh, final minute here. But I just want to thank both of you uh, for coming on the 6.5 and sharing what I consider very practical uh, advice. You know, listen, I love uh, unicorns too. But uh, <laughs> I think most people here at the show appreciate how to really get things done. And uh, what I love about this show is that you're talking about practical implementations. That doesn't mean it's not visionary. It doesn't mean it's not going to you know, result in, in billions of revenue increased or cost reduced or improved stickiness. But uh, anyways, thanks for coming on the show. I really appreciate that. I swear you said unicorn stew. Did I? <laughs> I think you said unicorns too. Wow. But okay. It almost sounded like lunch. No, I appreciate it. It's probably a great place to cut here. But Absolutely. Uh, so, hey, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to this 6.5 uh, on the road here in New York City at Evolve. 
NYC if you're doing the hashtag. Thanks for tuning in. More to come. See you all soon.